1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says that the message of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing, but to us that are being saved, it is the power of God. And that's a fascinating statement that tells us what we desperately need. The power of God is quite literally the key to victory. And the verse tells us that the message of the cross is the power of God. But what exactly is the message of the cross? You might assume that it's simply that Jesus went to the cross, died, and rose again. But the message doesn't stop there. It goes much deeper than that. So today we're going to be exploring what is the message of the cross, what it says about Jesus, and what it says about us that makes it the power of God. Jim, I'd like to welcome you to Thriving Branch today as we explore the message of the cross. And I am so glad that you're able to join me today for this study because this is probably the most important study that I have ever recorded. If there was one message that I could shout from the hilltops, it would be this one. If there was one message that I could ensure that every single Christian on the face of this planet knows, it would be this one. If there was one message, one video that I could ever be remembered for, I would want it to be this one. Long after I'm gone, I want this video above all others to be remembered. Do you think I'm overselling this? You're going to see, and I am so glad that you're watching this one today with me because we are exploring the message of the cross. This is the most critical message that every single believer needs to know because this is the power of God. Without this, there is no power. Without this, there is no victory. And that's not just my opinion. It's what the scripture says. So what is the message of the cross. As I mentioned in the opening, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says that the message of the cross is the power of God. If you're looking for victory, if you're looking for victory over the enemy, over circumstances, over evil forces, you need to understand the message of the cross. And so many people aren't even told what the real message of the cross is. They're given a form of Christianity without the power. They're giving a form of godliness without the power. So what is the message of the cross? Since we're told that the message of the cross is the power of God, it is crucial for us to know and understand this message. The cross is the central focus of why Jesus came, and the instrument through which he completed his sacrifice and his work. We know that already, but the message of the cross goes much deeper than that. Many Christians look at the cross with equal parts horror and equal parts rejoicing because of the sheer brutality of it, but ultimately the salvation which came from Jesus' sacrifice. And that right there is the first key point. It's vital to not look at the cross in an abstract way only, but as a personal event with real and tangible effects. And that's where many of us fall short because we're never told about what the cross accomplished. And that's kind of sad when you think about it because it's right there in Scripture. What the cross accomplished is right there for us to read and to know and understand in the Scripture, but many times it's skipped over. It's skipped over because we're too 
focused on other things. We're focused on behaviors and modification of our behaviors rather than the change that took place because of Jesus' sacrifice. We're going to get into that right now. Consider Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 12. And read this with me if you can. Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 12. It says, Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died to sin once. But in that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts thereof. And there are several crucial details for us to notice here about the message of the cross. Remember, the message of the cross is the power of God. And the first thing for us to see here is that it was a one-time sacrifice with eternal effect. A one-time sacrifice with an eternal effect. Jesus does not need to repeatedly die. He died once for all. And his sacrifice does not wear out. It does not grow old. It does not become weaker over time. It doesn't need to be renewed. It doesn't need to be refreshed. It was a one-time sacrifice for eternity. What this means is that you can be completely confident in what Jesus accomplished. It's not going to wear out. It's the same today as it was yesterday, as it was the day before, as it was from the very moment that he completed the work. It has remained the same. It doesn't wear out like a battery. It stays just as effective, just as powerful, just as true as it was then. So it is now. And next we see that he died to sin, but lives to God. Now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. If Jesus is perfect, if Jesus is sinless, how could he die to sin? Well, that's a great question. And it's the right question to ask. This detail goes to the very foundation of the message of the cross. Write the references down. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Tells us something about what Jesus did on that cross. God did not condemn Jesus on the cross. That may have just blown your mind, but think about this. God did not condemn Jesus on the cross. What happened was all of our sins were laid upon the body of Jesus. All of your sin and my sin was laid upon Jesus. It was imputed to him. It was set to his account. All of our sins were put on him. And God condemned sin in the body of Jesus. So Jesus became the sacrifice. He died to sin, but when he rose again, when he was resurrected, he did not rise with the sin still there. No, the sin was completely gone, done away with, destroyed. It's gone. But now, Jesus, having resurrected, he lives to God, completely apart from sin, completely righteous, because the sin that was laid on him is now done away with. This tells us that a change has occurred. So stay with me here. Next we see in verse 11 that Jesus' sacrifice 
was not done in isolation, but it was for you and for me. He did not die for himself. He died for you and for me. His sacrifice was not something to merely observe as a spectator, but it is the foundation of your spiritual identity. You see, many people, they look at the cross, they look at what Jesus did, and they say, hmm, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm glad he did that. But they don't personalize it. They don't personalize it. They look on it like an observer. But that's not how you're supposed to look at it. This is the foundation of your spiritual identity. The verse says to likewise reckon yourself dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Likewise means in the same manner. So think about that. Think about that in the light of the previous verse. Just as all of our sins were laid upon Jesus, imputed to his account, so too was all of his righteousness and perfect holiness imputed to us, set to our account. Reckon is an accounting term. It means to record it as a completed transaction. Record what Jesus did as a completed transaction. Identify with this being true in your life now today. You see how this all ties in with your identity? And this is how the divine power comes through the message of the cross. This is how it comes. As you recall, the scripture I quoted in the beginning, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, says that to those who are being saved, that's you and me, the message of the cross is the power of God. And now you can see more clearly how this can be true. The final detail that I have to share with you today is in verse 12 of Romans chapter 6. Notice that it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. The word therefore is critical to understanding the point. The funny thing is, we often drop it out of our casual reading and our casual reciting of this verse. Christian theology today, we usually try to jump to number four, point number four, without any of the previous points that I've listed in the slides. We don't explain the message of the cross to people. And so we've sent people into the spiritual fray without giving them any weapons. We've told them that they need to fight a battle against sin, but we never give them any power because we don't explain the cross. So they're left confused, they're left frustrated, utterly defeated. No wonder so many people give up. No wonder so many people think this is a fraud, but it's not their fault and it's not God's fault. This one is squarely on the shoulders of the pastors and leaders who aren't teaching the very fundamentals of the gospel. They're not teaching the cross. The message of the cross that gives people power and the message of the cross and the power that Jesus paid for them to have. We're not giving that to them. We jump right to point number four and say, well, you need to fight battle against sin. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. But we're not telling them how, and we're not telling them why. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. How? It happens through living your spiritual identity. And please hear me clearly on this. I'm not talking about your efforts. I'm not talking about your willpower. I'm not talking about your works at all. Those of you who have been longtime subscribers, you know that I would never do that kind of bait and switch on you like that. <laughs> I'm just making it clear for first time viewers, this is not about your works. I'm not telling you that you need to go out and fight a battle against sin by your own strength. 
by your own efforts, by your own self-control or your willpower. All of those things are actually fruits of the Spirit. You can't do it yourself. Now, when I say living your identity, I'm talking about the complete realization of your new nature in Christ. Taking it from a purely mental concept into the totality of your being. You don't wake up trying to be a Christian. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't wake up trying to be a Christian. Your first thought in the morning isn't, gee, I hope I don't sin today. Instead, your first thought when you wake up every morning should be, Father, thank you so much that I am completely righteous. I am holy. I am blameless because of what Jesus did. I am accepted and fully loved by you. And this day is already amazing because you and I are in complete union. You can say that sincerely from your heart because of what Jesus accomplished on that cross. And it has zero to do with your performance, with your efforts, or with your works. That is the message of the cross, my friend. That is your power. And that is why sin cannot reign in your mortal body. Because when you truly own your new identity, sin's power is completely crushed. Not by your efforts, but by the power of Christ in you. And it happens through the message of the cross. I look forward to thriving with you again. Be blessed.